Welcome to the Compost Company here in Ashland City, Tennessee. Uh, we are an industrial composting operation serving primarily Nashville but also uh, Middle Tennessee as a, as, as a region. We offer waste collection services and processing of organic waste, meaning food waste, lawn and garden waste, farm residuals, all sorts of different things. We do that in order to keep that material out of a landfill and then process it into products for farmers, gardeners, and landscapers, contractors for beneficial reuse. Uh, keeping that material out of the landfill is an environmental benefit uh, for methane reduction in, in landfill environments. But the finished compost that we make also is one of the great natural fertilizers of the world. And so we put that back into the ground in a beneficial way. So what we do here at the compost company, uh, once organic material arrives on our site, which it does in lots of different ways, we collect it from restaurants, grocery stores, hotels, and hospitals. Um, we also get it from third party uh, haulers, some uh, who collect it from residences and others coming from food distributors. It, it, it comes from a lot of different directions, but for the most part, it starts right here in our waste tipping pit, which is where all of the material lands so that we can then blend it to the right ratios. Uh, composting is kind of like baking in a way. You've got to, got to get all the ingredients right so that it will process really quickly, evenly into a really beautiful finished material without smelling. Because uh, that's one of the misconceptions about composting is that if you put all these things together, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a real stench. But one of the things I love about having people out to our site is usually when they get out of their car, they expecting some, you know, some hard thing and then realize that actually when done correctly, uh, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't create uh, any kind of noxious or nuisance odors. And so, but that's only if we're getting it really right. So we spend a lot of time blending our material over here with wood waste and lawn and garden waste uh, to get our carbon nitrogen ratios correct. And then that material goes out to our processing pad to, uh, to complete the cycle of controlled composting. So here we have uh, sort of phase two of the composting process. Once everything is blended in our pit um, to the right ratios, we actually run it through a grinder and onto uh, what we call our aeration system. And this is a process by which uh, blowers in these containers over here are actively blowing air up and through uh, the material that is composting. And air is a critical part of the composting process. If it can't breathe, it doesn't really uh, break down right, and it certainly doesn't break down. It, 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 it can get smelly and, 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 and bad when it goes anaerobic. So we keep it aerobic by pumping air through it. And so all of the material comes on here, and over about a, between a 30 and 45 day process, the material starts to break down. And that is thanks to zillions of microbes in there that are, that are working away at the carbon and nitrogen material that's in there and as long as we can keep the conditions perfect for them they do a lot of the heavy lifting for us so this will be here for a little over a month before it moves on to the next phase of the process where we screen it and cure it into a really nice good smelling finished compost all right so this is sort of phase three of our process what we call screening uh, after the feedstocks have been uh, composting for 30 to 45 days we, as long as the temperatures are in the, and the material's looking right, we will bring it over here uh, for screening. Essentially, we're separating the, 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 the material that's ready for curing from the larger bits or even some of the, the, the trash that wasn't supposed to be in the process to begin with is where we kind of start separating all of that out. So you can see one of our loaders is just driving into the hopper and, and sort of the big stuff and some of the trash is coming, coming out in a couple of phases over here going into what's called our curing phase and that's where the material is allowed to rest for usually about between 15 to 30 days to continue airing out and kind of continue the last phase of the, of the process where that it starts to smell good and become really mature compost that will then go out to farmers and contractors and landscapers and, and gardeners. So this is kind of the, the, the end of the road for our compost uh, products. We, we start with raw food waste. We start with uh, green waste that we have uh, chipped and through the various stages of our process we come to finished compost which is 
what we send out to our farming, gardening, and landscaping customers. And this is material that, uh, that, that has an incredible impact on soil health. One of the problems with conventional agriculture is that we have been depleting our soils for, you know, going on, you know, hundreds of years. And this is really about breathing life back into the soil using natural constituents. And so once this material is a really nice, dark, black and crumbly substance, we're really proud to send it out the door as Compost Company Compost. We uh, package that both in bags, but uh, the majority of what we make goes out in you know, truckloads for uh, farmers and landscapers and contractors. But we, uh, we bag it for you know, people who don't need a large truckload, which is, turns out to be a lot of people. We bag both our, our straight compost and also a potting soil that we make. Uh, landscape supply centers have it both in bags and in bulk, uh, places like Gardens of Babylon um, and, or Jolt and Hardware is one of our favorite spots. We've also got it in Kroger stores now, which is a pretty exciting development. Uh, Kroger spends um, a great deal of time and energy um, in their Zero Waste, Zero Hunger campaign. And a lot of uh, the material that, that comes out of their stores ends up back here for composting. And so we're really proud to see it. Um, out in front of Kroger stores for our gardeners who may want to pick up a bag. So in the composting process, we spend a lot of time moving material around, but we also spend a lot of time thinking about stormwater. Um, as you all know, it rains a lot in Tennessee, and so the, a lot of the water that touches what we are actively composting needs to be collected on site. That is uh, to keep it from you know going off into the nearest waterway. So we have a system of retention ponds on this portion of our site where all that water gets collected and then we can actually reuse it in the composting process. Moisture control is really important to us and so in a lot of cases the water that we collect we can pump it right back onto the raw material before it goes onto the pad for processing and this time of year when it's really good and hot not raining quite as much we use a lot of that storm water. We have to get a little bit more creative about it in the winter time when we're getting lots of rain and it doesn't really go anywhere but we keep all the water that touches our site stays on site and that is something that we're proud of. We think it's a very necessary thing to do, but also something we're required to do to meet the guidelines of our permit uh, from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation. Some of the challenges that we face as industrial composters uh, generally stem from awareness. A lot of people still don't know that this is an option. And so one of the things that we, as part of our mission, is making sure that people understand that we're not only here, but that we are an economical you know alternative to landfilling and you know in some parts of the country that's uh, you know everybody knows that that's out there and it's it's it, but here um it's it's still a relatively new concept and so we're we spend a lot of time trying to make sure that people understand that it's it's something that yes needs to be done but can be done right here in Middle Tennessee. the question is often asked of us what is the difference between landfilling and composting and we've even heard some people suggest that Oh well, you know, my organic waste is going into a landfill. It's going back into the, into the, into the earth. Isn't that just as good? And the answer is categorically no. It's not the same thing. And the, and the main difference is in a landfill environment, uh, organic material is mixed with all sorts of other things. Think diapers and batteries and and, and all the other stuff that makes up our, our our trash. If we can separate that organic waste, we we have a chance to make something really good out of that material but also in a landfill environment when that material is covered up every day it is deprived of the oxygen that would normally help it break down naturally um, and so in a landfill environment which we call anaerobic so starved of air uh, the organic material doesn't break down correctly and it produces large quantities of methane uh, landfills are one of the largest sources of methane on the planet and methane is a greenhouse gas that is between 30 and 80 times more potent than CO2. CO2 is the famous greenhouse gas, but methane is much, much more potent. And so by pulling it out of the landfill, we can prevent that methane production, but we can also turn it into beneficial uh, compost, which improves, again, air, water, and soil quality.